gosh, Lily. Okay, gotcha. Alrighty, so yeah, good morning. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm so glad that you are all here with us today. Um, my name is Clarissa Benavides, and I work here at the Graduate School. And today we have a wonderful speaker by the name of Danielle Gronsky. I do apologize if I did pronounce your last name wrong. <laughs> Uh, and she is from the uh, Alvarez College of Business. So today she'll be giving a presentation over project management in the workplace. And like what Lily said, we ask that you hold all questions until the end. And by that time, you're more than welcome to, you know, shoot a question in the chat or unmute yourself. And, you know, for those of you with phones, if we have time um, at the end, we'll be playing a little Kahoot game over some UTSA trivia and the top three winners will win a prize. So we look forward to that. And I guess without further ado, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Danielle. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I am very happy to be here and I'm going to share my screen as soon as my computer wants to cooperate. OK, there we go. And that screen. Perfect. OK, excellent. I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy to share with you guys. Um, all right, so welcome to Project Management, Leading Your Team Towards Goals. I am Danielle Goronsky, Associate Director of Engagement in the Alvarez College of Business. I am the dedicated MBA career coach. So for my MBAs on here, if you guys have questions or need help um, or just want some career advice, you guys can reach out to me specifically. Everyone else, you can still email me. I love questions and love helping our students. Um, all right, so we're going to dig in. Um, so on today's agenda, um, we're going to talk about components of effective leadership, transparency, honesty, and goal setting. So one of the things I want to do is I kind of want to see where everyone's at before we dig in. Um, just out of curiosity, what sort of leadership positions have you held? Maybe you currently hold them. Maybe you've had them in the past. But using the chat, if you guys wouldn't mind sharing some of those. And it can be formal or informal. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a job title. It can also just be, um, hey, I led the um, group project. President of a small business, excellent. Peer mentor. We have uh, someone with a PMP in the US Army. Um, currently a leadership position with staff and students. Excellent. So we have a wide variety of backgrounds and experience, everything from some small businesses um, to large. So different sizes of people that we're going to coach and lead. Um, we're going to hit a little bit on everything. And these are all things that you can adapt and adjust based on um, who you're working with, um, kind of where you're at in your progress. Um, but these are all good things that you can implement. And we're going to just hit sort of a couple key topics. Um, but it's enough that you'll get some good tips, um, but then you can always research a few extra things. And just remember, as leaders, it doesn't have to be um, you are like the CEO, you're the top person. You can be, and that's awesome, but it's completely okay if you're not. Maybe you just are the captain of your intramural sports team. Um, maybe you're just starting to move and transition into a place where you're like, hey, I haven't been a leader, but I want to, and I want to get more information on that. And so sometimes we're leading and we don't even realize it. Um, you know, it can always be a variety of different things. So don't discount your small acts of leadership because they all combine into the bigger overall um, leadership that you're giving. Um, all right. So a team leader is someone that helps to guide a team towards achieving a certain goal while managing and resolving technical and inter interpersonal roadblocks along the way. As a result, the role of a team leader often requires people to exercise both organizational skills and people skills. There needs to be elements of both managing people and managing the business. And these two, when done well, can live harmoniously together. Today, we're gonna to talk about eight different steps and some we're gonna go into a little bit more depth. Um, 
but as a part of an effective leadership, you know, there's these eight different steps and you're giving them all at different times, but we're going to discuss them and how they impact the team and encourage progress towards the company or unit goals. I think if, just make sure everyone double check that you're on mute as well. I think we had some background. Um, so leading your team is more than simply being good at your job. To be a good leader, a lot of factors need to come together. First, you need some emotional intelligence. We call that EQ and self-awareness. Uh, if you don't have self-awareness, um, if you're not able to manage your distressing emotions, or maybe you're not able to see it sometimes, um, if you can't have empathy and have effective relationships, then no matter how smart you are, you're not going to get as far as you want. Um, you need to use that team to help you achieve your goals. And there have been times where I'm like, I'm just going to do this all together um, early in my career, early in my people leadership. Um, and what I realized is the only way we achieve the department and the team goals is if I have everyone working together. Um, so you need to kind of ask yourself the following questions. How do I lead? How do I learn? Am I a good listener? Do I know how to hold myself accountable? Am I approachable? Knowing yourself is a foundational part to leading. It not only creates and builds self-confidence, it allows people to see you genuinely, and in turn, they will have greater confidence in you. An important part about leading is knowing how and being able to delegate as well. So you really have to know yourself. Hey, what am I good at? What am I weak at? What is my team good at? We've all heard this before. This aspect of leading a team can only be strengthened by knowing where you excel and where you can use support. Honesty with yourself and knowing how to utilize those on your team will have the greatest impact. It's okay to not know everything. I'm going to say that again. It's okay to not know everything. Some of the best people leaders I've seen are the ones who are honest and say, you know, this is why I hire experts in this area. Um, but I'm going to have a really good conversation with you about learning and understanding the business and make sure that we're working together. It is absolutely not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign that you don't know how to do your job. Um, but I would also encourage you to pursue professional development to, to strengthen both the technical skills for the industry, but also interpersonal and leadership skills. The more you develop, the more resources you will have as your roles continue to grow. Next, the kind of is a good segue from the first thing we just talked about. Get to know your team. Fully knowing your team means that you have invested the time to understand how they are wired to think and what is required to motivate them to excel. Building rapport can take time and depending on the circumstances, we may not always have a lot of time on our side. Uh, there are definitely busy seasons where it just is go, go, go and you blink. Um, that recently happened to me. I recently hired someone and I blinked and I'm like, wait, you've been here for 30 days. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but this means that relationship building must continue to be done along the way, even in those small incremental moments. We won't usually have all the pieces perfectly placed before starting. Team members may have skills that can contribute to key areas that they weren't initially assigned to. Understand the, the team's strengths and weaknesses and how to fit together for a great success. Um, an example of this is I had a leader, we were very busy and once the day started, everyone slammed, we are meeting and engaging with our customers and our clients. So what she did is every morning, uh, she was the director, she met with her team of directors. Uh, she was the executive director, we were all directors underneath her. So she spent 10 to 15 minutes in each of our offices, number one, just checking in, making sure are we okay? Um, because your leaders, your team members, they're going to impact how the rest of the office or their department or the campus goes. Um, so checking in with us, um, being a resource to us, being an advocate, giving just some encouragement. Maybe it's been a rough morning. Maybe we had a bad email or a phone call. Um, but she always took 10 to 15 minutes to just kind of go to each of our offices, sit with us. Um, and even if we just talked business, it still felt like a personal connection um, because she cared enough to take 10 minutes out of her very busy day um, to come talk with me and just hear how I'm doing, you know, appreciate me, praise me. Um, we'll talk about some of that later. 
But learning each other as we go may not only be challenging for you, but for the team as a whole. So you need to stay calm, confident, and flexible in your learning, your learning of your leading and how you lead a team. Great leaders know they don't have all the answers. Again, I can't emphasize that enough. It's okay to not have all the answers, but maybe a team member does. A great example of this is those with organizational knowledge. Have they worked there for 10 years, know the ins and outs of different areas, how to accomplish things? Maybe they know that client and the history with that client as additional people have come in and out of your team. Um, so maybe they've just been in the same role for 10 years, they're happy with that. Um, we still need to make sure we value them and make sure that they're part of that team and they feel it. So get to know them. Uh, so then leading the team, this is what you're all here for, right, is goals, creating goals, making sure everyone understands them and acknowledging expectations comes next. There will be one or more team goals needing to be achieved, but don't underestimate the importance and power of individual goals throughout the team. It's within these individual goals that you will be able to see personal performance and notice if everyone's individual responsibilities are coming together correctly. So setting goals with each team member also shows them a level of appreciation and respect as individuals, acknowledging how they will be, how they will personally contribute to the success of the team. Use their current skills and gain new ones as well. Control leads to compliance, sure, but autonomy leads to engagement and in return, greatness. And those are gonna be the people that go the extra mile for you um, when they know that they're appreciated and when you've said, hey, I have a goal for you, I want you to be, you know, the top salesperson in the company this, this month, this year. Um, I want you to get this recognition or hit this goal. Many companies have goals as a yearly review process. Um, if they don't, and if that's not built in by your company, be proactive and set goals with your team and individual members and involve the team in the goal development process when it's appropriate. Um, there are some goals where, hey, we need to hit this number as a team period, but how they get there. Um, I used to break it down for my team. We had a yearly goal um, that was um, given to us by the state of Texas, by our, our corporation. Um, but then what I would do is break my sales team into individuals. So, hey, your individual goal for this week is, you know, three new clients. For the month, it's, you know, 20 new clients. Um, and then weekly, we'd meet how to get there. So there's the company goal, yes. But then you need to break that down to the individual and the department goals. Um, sometimes you can just do have them write out their own SMART goals. Sometimes they're much more aware of their department, their goals, and their how they fit into things than we sometimes are as people leaders. So have them write their own goals. SMART goals help to create attainable time-based goals. We all want, all want to be number one, but SMART goals will help you have specific steps and how you get there, how you can achieve those goals and exceed those goals as well. So I mentioned SMART goals. Um, while your goals help you to know the destination, goals can also sabotage you from the very beginning if not created strategically. If things are going south if you're, or if you're assessing your team's performance after the fact, don't hesitate to consider how effective your goals were. Um, I, I've seen it multiple times where people will put goals out and it's like that's not even realistic especially if it's tied to like a commission or um bonuses you want to make it realistic make it you know a little bit of a stretch goal but make it realistic for them otherwise they're going to get burnt out um in disillusioned and so there's there's a fine line between um this smart goal and then something that is just completely you know unrealistic um, so when you create individual and team goals, remember, keep them smart. Um, so when a goal is specific, everyone will understand what it means and you'll know if it is met or not met. When a goal is measurable, it'll help with your assessment along the way. You'll have a better grip on when and how to conduct check-ins with team members. Um, you can always also schedule specific, uh, check-in meetings. So maybe you are in a place that's busy and you can't do one-on-ones all the time, but once they set those goals, set a meeting for the day that the goal is due. Hey, we're going to meet and we're going to do a follow-up on this, or maybe a week before it's due to kind of do a check-in. 
Um, but make sure that there's milestones, that it's measurable. Um, we want a way to, you know, achieve. Are you hitting your goal? Are you on target? Um, when a goal is attainable, it's less likely that your team will burn out or develop frustrations. Attainable goals help keep everyone engaged. And when a goal is relevant, it is easier to have everyone on the same page. They understand why you and they are doing the work. And lastly, when a goal is timely, your team has enough time to get the job done. And you have enough time to make sure all goes well and provide appropriate feedback. Timely goals will also be in line with the greater goal of the department or company. And that leads us into talking about the cascade model, um, which I really like, and I think it's extremely effective. And this is definitely something, um, especially for small businesses to start, or you can even take this as a department or a unit. Um, great managers know exactly where the team is right now, where they are headed, and what they need to do to get there through good communication. They help keep the team on track. They also make sure each team member understands their individual role in executing that strategy. So what you want to do is you want to lay out the vision and then give the strategic framework of how they will make the vision a reality. Um, this makes it a little more realistic. It makes it a little more relevant in your employees' eyes. The vision statement will help your employees filter all their decisions and make sure there is cohesive business development. This is a roadmap for your company or for your department. You want to communicate that vision and regularly reference it. It's not just a good wall decoration. I mean, how many people, the company you work at, the vision statement is on the wall, but you don't know what it says. And that's kind of a problem, right? If we have visions and if we have a mission, these are the company goals. We should, what we do as individuals and as teams, all be in alignment with those pieces. And that's also a great way to filter. Am I doing just a lot of work? Is it relevant? How does this relate? That vision statement is also a great filter for that. Um, so start by writing your personal vision statements using some of these suggestions here on this page. Um, then have each employee do it. So get your personal vision statement. So maybe we're, we're talking about a department. Um, you can apply this whether it's as a company or just as a department. You can also have a team building experience where the team comes together and completes this exercise as a whole. Um, I really like this cascade model pictured here. It gives clear steps for the team and how the vision impacts the key performance indicators and the project. So you should start with the vision, your value. Okay, then what is the focus area we want to come from this? And then from those focus areas, you create objectives. Hey, these are the objectives that we want to achieve. So from those objectives, what is my key performance indicator and what's the project that's going to get there? So it kind of cascades down. Um, some places it's like, I'm going to create this project and hope that I get this outcome. So another aspect and another way to do this, um, and you've got more on the vision statement, so you can be writing these notes down or, or taking a picture. Um, in an article on Perform Yard, they discuss aligning employee goals with corporate objectives. When goals align through all levels of the organization, business objectives are accomplished. This prevents individual and department silos. So you want to start with organizational goals. Then these should flow down to the department or cascade down through the organization and from the department to the team and then to the individual. So you have your overall your overarching organizational goal. From there, each department creates the department goals that are gonna help them achieve the organizational goal. Um, maybe it's to increase revenue, decrease waste, create a new product. Um, and then in those departments, you have each team in each segment and each of those teams should have a goal and how they're gonna to contribute to that department goal. And then on that team, each individual should have goals that are gonna help them accomplish that team goal. Uh, you can have goals um, that tie back to the objectives. You also want to make those metrics available to everyone. Um, this really helps each team member see how they impact the overall organizational goals. This can be as simple as regular emails. Um, it can be a weekly email with, here's where the department's at as an update. Um, I had a company where um, each department got uh, 
graded and we knew exactly what we needed to do, what the metrics were. And basically you got an A if you were hitting your metrics, if you were on target, you know, and then based on other factors, you were getting uh, graded. And so you knew where, where you fit, where you fit among your peers, um, and then kind of the hierarchy and how you fit into the organization's goals. Um, and then goal alignment in the performance management is easier as well. Um, it makes conversations much easier in performance management, in review time. Um, are people contributing? Are they individual contributors, team contributors? How do they fit into the team and the overall success of the team? Um, and so it, it's a much easier system to do that with. So next is setting clear expectations. And this lends itself to leading teams of people. In order to set expectations for these goals, consider explaining to your team what success look, looks like. A mental or visual representation of what's expected goes a long way. Um, with this, there is less confusion about the end result, or at the very least, it gives your team an opportunity to ask questions and gain clarity. A last and still important part of sex setting expectations comes in the form of policies and procedures. There needs to be a clear path to goal achievement. Are there clear policies and procedures on your team? Do they know where to find them? Are they easily accessible? Does your team, does everyone know what to do if they believe a deadline won't be met? What if you're gonna miss a deadline? What do you do? What, what have you expressed as your expectation? I make it known and clear if at along the way there's a hiccup, I wanna know it's easier to fix a small problem than a big problem. And I've made that clear in, in every industry I've worked. Um, and then it helps us communicate and problem solve and troubleshoot along the way. And then we can continue on the same timeline. What about when to bring up concerns or new ideas? Is that in a one-on-one -on -one with you? Or do you have a time on your meeting agenda instead that's for questions and discussions? These may seem small, but they're significant decisions. It'll be impossible to think of absolutely everything from the beginning. So do what you can and then be flexible, strategic and decisive as you go along. Easy, right? You got this. Communication is such an important part of project management that the PMP has a whole chapter dedicated to it. Project managers cite communication-related issues as the largest, most frequently occurring problem experienced on projects. Who has not sent an email and then the response you got was like a miss? Like whether it was what the, the person needed to do, what you were sending, I think we've all had those, right? And that's been one of the challenges through the pandemic is how do we communicate and have good communication in a virtual environment? Good communication stems from a solid communication strategy that is planned, managed, monitored, and assessed. Have you ever had that situation where miscommunication occurred, like I said, via email? I've had a few hastily written emails that I thought clearly expressed my expectations. In my mind, it was clear, like, yes, this is exactly what you need to do. Uh, then when we received the results, that didn't quite align with what was written. It creates frustration for both parties and delays the project timeline. I've learned it is better to take a few minutes to think through steps and descriptions in a clear and logical manner. Never underestimate the power of a bullet point to create order and steps. Also this way, if there's a question, um, they can easily say, hey, in response to bullet number three, in response to the second bullet, I have a question on this. Um, but then it also helps them to have a logical process and in order of what they can do and what to expect. Um, and also if you're making changes, hey, change this. Otherwise it's just a bunch of text that they need to interpret. Um, so make sure it's clear, logical, but be aware that relaying information is only one piece of communicating. Communication is more than a message sent. The receiver's interpretation and confirmation of clear understanding is the other part. How often do we say, what questions do you have on this? What is the next step? Please ask questions. 
Are you a listener? Do you have that open dialogue where if they read it, they'll immediately respond and say, hey, I have questions about this. Um, sometimes there's that leader who um, does not have that open communication and people don't feel comfortable. You have to make it so that it's a normal part of the process to ask questions and gain clarity. As a project or team leader that is moving a team towards goal achievement, you need to expand your awareness to how your message is being interpreted. It's so important. Daily or weekly meetings ensure miscommunications are caught early in the project. A lot of people will do a daily standup so that every morning everyone's checking in, especially if you're a team um, that's working on developing maybe a new software, a new product, um, new technology, um, new medical um, devices or things. Having that daily check-in in the morning helps everyone to know, and then also to be a good team to strategize and problem solve. So speaking of making decisions, uh, being decisive is a key part of leading your team to success. And it can be very difficult sometimes. This part can take a decent amount of time and practice, but it truly pays off in the end. Decisions need to be made on a constant basis and thriving teams with great leaders know how to act decisively and with purpose. Growth and success are contingent on determined action. So procrastination and perfectionism will consistently slow everything down. The best leaders have the confidence and the courage to make tough decisions, as well as the compassion to listen to the needs of others. Sometimes it's hard and there's a fine line between getting consensus and getting collaboration. Lack of decision-making can slow individual work and start delaying the team. Indecision can cripple an organization and stall productivity. Think about a time when you had to wait for a response or an approval. You can't move forward on a project until the approval comes through. And by then you've lost valuable hours, days, weeks to work on that project. And then when you do get that approval, you're scrambling and stressed, and it's the only priority you're working on. So then you have to put off other things so that you can focus on this because you finally got approval. So as leaders, it's important to get our team what they need when they need it so that they can move forward. And sometimes it's simple decisions that you wouldn't think would slow down productivity, but it might just be that one linchpin that impacts everything and that everything's resting on. So a few things. Resist the urge to avoid or minimize risks. Any business, any leadership has risks. There's always going to be a risk, no matter what, whether you make a decision or you don't make a decision. By not making any decision and not moving, you're putting your company and those goals at risk. Once you make the decision, share the why. Sometimes if you have to make a hard decision or you know there's a decision that you're going to make that people may not like, Especially if you're a new leader, you took a new position, you moved to a new department. What I've learned is it's easier to go down if there's a why. Hey, this is what corporate says. This is the, the HR policy um, and you can't be leaving work early and still getting paid for it. Had to make those conversations um, that I didn't think would be so difficult and they were. Um, but share the why. Why are you making this decision? Helps them to understand. Hey, I'm sharing this. This is um, something that corporate wants. And this is here's how it's feeding into that larger organizational goal. Here's why we're doing this. You know, we need to increase revenue. Um, you know, this wasn't following company policy. Whatever it is, um, just give the why and people are able to swallow it a little better. They may still not like it, but at least maybe they won't be um, completely resistant to change. They might just make the change, but maybe not as, as excitedly. Um, once you make the decision, share the why, and then strong decisions come from a strong sense of self-confidence. Be confident in who you are. Um, know that you're in this position for a reason. Um, you have the knowledge to make these decisions. So just be confident in your reason and move forward. Sometimes you have to take that risk. Um, because maybe you saw something further down the road. Maybe you saw something that how it's going to achieve a long-term goal. Also, don't make being impulsive with being a good decision maker. Um, sometimes we just start saying yes or yeah, let's do this, let's do this. 
And maybe as a leader, we've just said yes to 50 different things, um, but maybe they're conflicting goals. Um, sometimes it's okay to say, great, send, submit me a report on that. Share some more data and share some more information with me on that. Um, sometimes it's okay to get ask those questions, get more information. And sometimes you have to say no. Don't just say yes to everything because, hey, they're asking me. I want to say yes. I want, I want them to like me. Um, so don't mistake those two things. And that can be hard. And then finally, trust yourself. Um, you have a master's degree. You have the training, the experience that qualifies you for this. You went through an application process, a approval process, interview. You went through this whole process. They didn't just give you this job because, well, you're the only one who applied. They gave you this job because you qualified for it. They trust based on your experiences, your degrees, your background, you have the qualifications to be in this position to make this decision. So trust yourself. You attend an excellent university with excellent faculty and staff supporting you. Um, you deserve this. You're here for a reason. So trust yourself, trust your judgment. Feedback is a two-way street and super important for leading your team toward goals. It makes sense to have check-ins scheduled with everyone as well as with the team as a whole. Um, those check-ins, like I mentioned earlier, it can be that daily meeting in the mornings, it can be weekly, um, or sometimes depending on your role, the position, maybe it's a monthly, or maybe it's a quarterly meeting, or maybe it's at the end of the project. But I really encourage you to schedule those meetings now because otherwise time's gonna get away from you. Um, and this way you can build your plan and everything around it. When meeting with team members to give and receive feedback, make sure you know what resources are at your disposal in order to help them and solve issues in the moment, if possible, if you can anticipate what might be coming up. There's a simple way to find out what your team needs. Ask them, ask them, what do you need? Um, maybe they don't have training on that. So maybe it's it's someone new or maybe you're new to the department and you just assign someone something, ask them, maybe they just need training. Sometimes it can be as quick and as easy as, oh, let me turn my monitor and show you where to find it on, on the screen. But again, it goes back to, you don't wanna delay that timeline. When they leave, they should be able to start and not have to wait for where to find it on the website, where to find it in the company, who to talk to. Um, but ask them, they'll tell you what they need. Um, and it goes a lot further in that relationship and people development, um, but then it also can help with the accountability. Hey, I asked you what you needed, you know, please tell me, I, I wanna help you. And the sooner I can help you, the further we can achieve the goals. You may not always be able to give them everything they want and that's okay, but you can always work hard to make sure they have everything they need. Sometimes they'll ask you for something and I'm like, that's a great question. Let me figure out if we can do that or where, where I can find that. Um, you can always work hard to make sure they have everything. You can always do that. Work for them. You're the resource and you're their advocate. So examples of resources, in addition to the obvious ones of money, can include subscriptions. Maybe they need a subscription to a magazine to stay current on the latest trends. Um, professional development opportunities. Is there a conference that they can go to um, to stay current on information, changes in the industry, changes in legislature? Do they need office supplies? Like literally I've been places where they're like, I really just want like a dry erase board and some Sharpies so I can track my goals. Okay, maybe they want a goal board. Um, Maybe it's access to specific people in the company. Hey, I need to have a conversation with this person who's out of our department, or maybe is it an executive higher level in the company? Um, and maybe you need to help facilitate that, or maybe they need support for some from someone else. And maybe that person is you. Maybe someone simply might need more of your time and energy. Feedback is especially important as you onboard new employees. Take the time to answer the questions so they understand the company expectations, your communication style, your expectations, your leadership style. Feedback sets correct behaviors early on. 
I feel as a leader, my number one job is to be a resource for my employees. And I make sure to take time to answer their questions or help them troubleshoot early. If someone is walking in my door, they need me. They need something from me. Um, and so I take the time no matter how busy I am, because if I can answer that question or give them that resource or point them in the direction that they need um, and giving them that feedback, it might keep the, the job on track. It might help them to continue to be productive. Through this process, I produce top employees who consistently achieve top company honors because they understand their role in the company and my expectations for them. Um, feedback also shouldn't be scary. If we're giving it early and giving it in a positive way or just making it, this is professional. Um, so when someone submits something to me, I just tend to have bullet feedback. Here, here's my feedback. I don't say this is terrible. Why are you sending me this? You know, I'll look at it and I'll review. Like part of it was, did I not set expectations? Um, and then after everything, I just make it common to debrief or to give feed, casual, uh, formal or informal feedback. Hey, here's some thoughts on this. Here's how we can do it better. And it actually creates a culture where feedback is accepted and you want to continue to be the best. You want to make small changes or, hey, here, I heard this, or, hey, can you tweak this a little bit? Or, hey, we overbought food. We can save on budget by ordering less food next time. Small things like that can be normal feedback, um, but it's all in the way you deliver it. Um, it's all in the way you say it in your mannerisms as well. Accountability. Ooh, this can be a tough one. So often teams only discuss accountability when things go wrong. Because of this, it can be a term charged with negativity, including stress, fear, and even disciplinary measures. But it doesn't need to be this way. Right now, a lot of what we do is still online, still, um, and it's not going away. Accountability can be especially hard virtually because in this environment, communication takes more work and it can be harder to feel progress is being made. So building systems for team accountability ensures accountability feels fair and non-judgmental. This would look like regular planning and goal setting or standards around sharing progress updates. Um, maybe it's every meeting, everyone's gonna take five minutes to share a progress update. It's less about a manager or teammate nagging for information and more about adhering to a process everyone has agreed upon. Everyone has agreed upon it. So it's not you as a leader who's like, oh, this person's nagging me. I can't believe, you know, they're on my back. Hey, no, we've agreed upon it. Everyone's sharing. And then that system holds you accountability. Um, and it's a system holding you accountable and not just the people. A simple way to have accountability to set milestones and timelines as well. You can check in with each person as the milestone is arriving. And then when it arrives, have a visible way to track goal achievement. If you are in sales, there is the standard thermometer, which me measures your total sales for the month, but it also shows maybe where you're fit into the larger company goal in terms of revenue. And this is a way to have accountability without ever saying a word. Every time the members of your team pass that visual goal board, they're reminded of where they are as well. And you can adapt that for so many different industries or areas. Um, maybe that the accountability piece is, you know, some positive customer service things. Maybe you're in a customer service industry. Some informal accountability is just seeing those things up there and what is your team doing? And, hey, I want to have one. My name's not on that board. I want to be up there too. Well, we all love for recognition. Oh, I love it a lot. We're all, we also um, appreciate simply being respected, right? Um, so take the time to give teammates the accolades they earn and deserve. Um, I have a teammate who there was a kudo board and weekly they would all do kudos for each other and she has it on her wall. And those are all not only good reminders, but also helps create a positive team environment too. So give your teammates those, those accolades um, they deserve and it can be formal or informal. There's some really great companies that do a lot of um, good positive reinforcement measures. Um, if you want a great team, if you want happy people, you have to praise them and acknowledge them. Don't take performance for granted. Giving praise and recognition shows that you're paying attention to their efforts. 
that small part of, hey, I'm paying attention to you. I saw what you did and it's awesome. I saw the way you helped that client. I saw the way you helped that customer service, help with customer service. In turn, this will help them continue performing with purpose. One simple way to do this is to send an email to the team about when a member has done something good or right. Or if you're a people leader, forward on to the next level of management. So if you're the head of a team, um, forward that on to the organization, forward that on to your executive or your VPs, forward that on to that next level and CC the individual contributor who this is about. Um, their name will be recognized. They'll also then now have that positive, like, hey, I am important to this company. Um, and they'll be more engaged. They'll be, feel more empowered and um, have a sense of belonging um, and responsibility for the organization. Um, I've also learned to ask my team how they like to be rewarded. It's so simple, but what I've learned is everyone is motivated differently. What motivates me is completely different than what motivates everybody else. Um, some people are not money motivated. Um, I worked in sales and I'm like, I don't care about commission. Pay me, pay me a, a flat salary and I'll probably outsell everybody. Um, I just didn't like that pressure. And, and then you got into some questionable, um, you know, policies and ethics and company versus, versus individuals. Um, but how do they like to re be rewarded? I had a team that I tried some different rewards with them. And the unanimous response was food. Um, I was like, hey, we can go bowling. What do, you, what do you want? How do you want rewards? You guys want gift cards? And they're like, take us out to lunch. Literally, they loved it. And they were top of the company consistently month after month. And we have quarterly awards. And um, I have a, two trophies uh, to prove it that we were the best um, each year. And they loved it that I take, took them to lunch. They also loved team goals. They were more successful when there was one department goal and they all worked towards achieving it because each member maybe had a good week, a bad week, but in the end, it all balanced out and they all achieved. When I had an individual, they, it was like the worst month we've ever had. And I'm like, well, I'm never doing that again, but just ask them what motivates you? What, what rewards do you like? And maybe you need to modify your reward structure based on individuals or one month you do, you know, a cash reward, one month you, you do food, maybe you mix it up. You never know what's going to, what's going to hit and what's going to have traction. Um, and then celebrate success. You know, lunch was a reward, but it was also a celebration. So celebrating success is a short lived activity. It's a great way to live in the moment, reflect, and it serves as a reminder to continue moving forward. Who doesn't want more celebrations? Like who doesn't want to have their work celebrated and recognized um, individually and among their peers? It's especially important to reward a significant goal achievement or deadline, especially if it's a, it's a yearly goal. It's something they've been striving for all year. Like I said, gift cards, take them out to lunch or dinner, give them a day off or any other numerous ways to celebrate. Um, one of the best ones that I had was we had a yearly goal and I told them to pick where they wanted me to take them to dinner. I said, I'll go anywhere, budget's not an issue. Uh, we went to the top of the Tower of the Americas here and, and had the rotating dinner and we all had steak and uh, creme brulee and it was awesome. And we have that memory and then we talked about it and then they looked forward to something like that at the end of every year. And so they strove hard for that. In addition to the eight behaviors and actions we just went through, there's one other important point in leading your team towards goals, and it's transparency. And I've touched on that throughout and woven this idea of transparency, and it's okay to be real and to be honest with your team. Like, I don't know that. Let me find that information out for you. Or, um, you know, that's a weak area of mine. I need to, I need to, you know, get a certificate in that or do a LinkedIn learning on that. Who here has a team leader or supervisor that thought they were being transparent, but you were like, you're the least transparent person. And actually, I feel like sometimes you're disingenuine and it really makes it a difficult work environment, right? Um, I think we've all had teammates or supervisors like this before. It can make things awkward and unfulfilling as well. These poor examples can be just as impactful of positive ones to keep in mind. So present ideas and needs to your team professionally, respectfully, and be honest with yourself in the process um, and have that impact your strategic goal setting as well.
We are not alone in these thoughts. This has become a sometimes, no matter how hard we try, leading a team can be a challenge and go differently than we planned or hoped. While we went over we to succeed as a leader, you're only as good as your team perceives you to be. Can you be effective if you aren't transparent? Yes, no, sometimes, and sometimes it's situational. But more importantly, do you and your team have a sense of the same definitions of transparency? This is a great topic to cover when you're creating goals and going over expectations. We already mentioned how you won't always have all of the answers. So allow your team to see that and ask them what they think. Ask them to contribute. Sometimes they have the best ideas because they're the ones who are doing the job on a daily basis. This also allows you the ability to then concentrate on sharing information and collective problem solving. Purposeful communication only enhances transparency. For example, make sure your team knows who has what roles. Sometimes it's the easiest clarifying job description and saying, hey, this person does this and you do this. And, and it's that easy. Of course, you need to be available as a leader, but when you aren't, do people know who to turn to next? Don't be afraid to go back to step, step one, check in with yourself and ask yourself what is truly working and why. Ask what's not working and why. And also remember, we just talked about feedback being a two-way street. Ask for feedback from your team if you aren't really receiving any. And it may be a process because you may need to break down some, some cultural things that have been developed in company or individual culture. Manage things, lead people. The next time you have the ability to step up or are appointed as a leader, take the time to appreciate all that it means and all the work that is to come. It is work, but it's also very re rewarding. If a leadership role is something you are currently aspiring to, start working toward it now. Practice setting SMART goals, getting to know yourself better as a worker and a leader, and getting to know your coworkers better. Remember that in the end, we want to manage things, manage deadlines, manage tasks, goals, money, and time. But people, we want to lead people, especially the ones on your team. And that is all I have. And so now I'm gonna turn it over for Q and A. And I think I went a little over, but um, I hope you all uh, learned something. So Q and A time. <laughs>